if you live in America, I believe there's never been a time more important than today for you and I to create wealth for ourselves. And let me explain to you what I mean by this. I don't mean wealth as in the Ferraris, the Lambos, the Porsches, the big houses, all that other stuff, although there's nothing wrong with that. I'm talking you and your family being financially free, financially set, so you go to sleep at night comfortably knowing all the major decisions of your life they're gonna be taken care of. So why am I saying today is the most important time? Here's why. America today has $20 trillion of national debt. That's just the national debt, most we've ever had. On the other side, we have 60 plus trillion dollars of unpaid debt. Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security. We have to pay that. And by the way, the only way the government is able to pay those two things is by you and I, our taxpayer money. That's how it goes, which means taxes are eventually going to go up. Today in America, you roughly pay 50 cents per dollar you make. You make 100 grand, you keep 50, 50 cents goes to the government, you keep the other half. I believe today you got to get your income in the next three years to $250,000 bare minimum. And in five years, you've got to be around a half a million dollar your income. So the question becomes, well, Pat, I've never made this kind of money. How am I going to make it? I'm going to talk to you in this video on four steps, how to create wealth for yourself. By the time you're done with this video, you're going to know the four steps, how to create wealth for yourself. And I'll make a case to you, just like an attorney does, on why I believe today's by far the most important time, for, important time for you to create wealth for yourself. And you can be the judge of it. You can say, I disagree. I don't agree with what you're saying, Pat. Or at the end, which what I believe is going to end up happening, you're going to say, this makes a lot of sense. So having said that, let me introduce myself. My name is Patrick Bed David. I'm the CEO of PHP Agency. I also have a show on YouTube. I'm the creator, the founder of Value Team, and it's a channel on YouTube. So two years ago, I did a video answering the question, how I made my money. A lot of people were curious, Pat, how do you make your money? And I explained that in a video that I did a couple years ago. A lot has changed since then till today. I'm going to give you an update both on PHP as well as Valuetainment. Back in January of 2016 when we shot this video, Valuetainment had a total of 22,070 subscribers. We had roughly 8 million minutes watched, 4,433 comments. This is what the numbers looks like today. We have roughly 450,000 subscribers, 200 million minutes watched, and 85,000 plus comments on Valuetainment. So aside from these stats that you see with Valuetainment growing, we've had a lot of different guests on Valuetainment. Mark Cuban, Magic Johnson, Wayne Gretzky, John Calipari, Tim Grover, Clint Hill. The list goes on. It's been now taught at many different universities around the world. It's exciting what's taking place with Valuetainment. But let me tell you about PHP front and what's been taking place with that. PHP, when I did the video two years ago, we had roughly 2,000 plus licensed agents. Today we have 5,000. We're in 49 different states. And recently, Oscar De La Hoya, uh, the famous boxer, Gabriel Brenner, who is the first Mexican-born professional sports owner in America, very, very successful businessman, as well as Greg Sharon out of Lyle Group, have invested $10 million into PHP, which you can find out about on Crunchbase. Last but not least, one of the things we're very proud of with PHP agency is the fact that our top line revenue has beaten the prior top line revenue 10 quarters in a row, which is something we're very excited about. But having said that, all these successes, I want to take a moment and tell you something that's bothering me today. I have family, have kids, and, and this is really bothering me. You know, recently I went on a six or seven week tour and I went and spoke in front of 20 different cities in America. Thousands of people showed up uh, and it was a good time. But at the same time, it was good for me to kind of see the heartbeat of where America's at today. Let me explain to you what I mean by this. You know, my kids, every night I come home and I look at my two boys in the eyes. My daughter's a year old, so I don't yet do it with her, although I joke with her sometimes. But I look at my two boys and I ask them, I say, Daddy, what are the four things we focus on as a family? And they say, Daddy, we focus on lead, respect, improve, and love. I said, yes. I said, how about the other two things? Do we bully people? No. Do we get bullied? No. The part that bothers me today is I think the American people are being bullied today. And let me tell you by who. I think they're being bullied by the media today. And when I say media, I'm not talking Fox. I'm not talking CNN, MSNBC. I'm talking all of media. Because if there's one thing you need to know about media, media makes money based on three C-letter words. Change, conflict, and controversy. They don't make money off good news. They make money off of bad news. Why? If you ask yourself, Human nature, we have a tendency of sharing bad news, bad experiences more than good news. So media knows this. So they know how to dance with us and kind of make us spread news so they can get more platform and make money. Let me explain what I mean by this. 
during the last couple months. Tell me if any of these issues that I'm about to share with you, you've heard the TV, radio, or newspaper magazines talk about, and I want you to think about how many times you've heard it. Listen to this. Weinstein, okay? Kevin Spacey, Colin Kaepernick, NFL, Trump, Clinton, Russia. It doesn't matter what it is. Every day, they're talking about topics that don't necessarily 100% affect 100% of all the Americans today. Why don't we talk about things that affect everybody? Things such as finance. Let me give you a stat for you to be thinking about. This is something that I would like to see the media talk about more. You don't even hear politicians talk about this a lot. Here's a stat I want to show you. This is a stat showing you what cost of living looks like today versus 1990. Now, the most recent stats I have is comparing 1990 to 2015. Now, I want you to think about this year as I go through these stats. During this 25-year period, we've had two Republican presidents, we've had two Democratic presidents. So this is not a Republican thing or a Democrat thing. This is an America thing, okay? So here's some stats. In 1990, if you wanted to send your kid to college, it cost you, four-year college tuition cost 30408 In 2015, 94400 That's nearly tripling, tripling the cost of college. The average home price in 1990 was $101,000. Today it's $220,000, more than double. Gas was a buck 12. Today, 233. Some of you guys are listening to me saying 233. You're saying it's not 233. It's 320 in California, but this is 2015. Cost of raising a child, 1990, $120,000 from zero to 18. Today, $245,000. New car was $9,432. Today, $33,560, nearly 4X. Now let's look at the most important one here. So all these stats are okay, you know, meaning it's okay if tuition tripled, it's okay if car prices quadrupled, as long as our income also tripled, right, or quadrupled. But let's look at what our income looks like. Median income in 1990. 52,689, median income in 2015, 55,775. Let me get this straight, 25 years. Everything we buy has doubled or tripled, but our income has only gone up 6%. You tell me how this makes any sense. No wonder so many people in America are in debt and no one on the media is talking about it. We have all these distractions. Russia, Trump, Hillary, Kaepernick, NFL, Weinstein, Spacey. How about we talk about something that affects us? Let me tell you why this bothers me. Here's why it bothers me. I grew up in a family. My mother and my dad loved each other. There's a reason why they got married. But they got a divorce. You know why they got a divorce? They had no idea how money worked. My parents have never owned a mutual fund before. I was born and raised in Iran, lived there for 10 years. We escaped six weeks after Khomeini died. I think he died June 3rd of 89. We went to Germany as a Christian family. I lived at a refugee camp for nearly two years. Then we came to the States. While we were in Germany, my parents got a divorce. I grew up with a mother, sister. I saw my dad once or every other week. Money was an issue. They argued over money over and over and over again. I joined the army. I had a regular job before joining the army for Burger King, Bob's Big Boy, Hagen dazs I drove a 1979 Honda Accord that only went to drive. It didn't go reverse. We bought it for $500. I didn't grow up with money. I was a welfare kid. I went to regular school. I was a regular average kid who joined the army because they told me the only route they can save yourself is joining the army. And the entire time while I'm growing up, watch this, the entire time while I'm growing up, maybe you relate to this, all I was fed by everybody around me, including media, rich people are greedy. Money is the root of all evil. Money is this. Rich people are that. They're selfish. They're this. And eventually, one day I had a conversation with my mom. I said, Mom, if rich people are so bad and money is so bad, why is it that that's the only thing you guys argue about and talk about? I'm sick of it. If it's so bad, why do you talk about it so much? Why? I love you, I love my dad, I love my family. Why does this keep happening? And I saw with all my friends, and I said, I'm sorry, I'm sick and tired of buying all these lies. I'm not gonna let the media do that to my family, I'm not. And I wanna make sure anybody that touches me or talks to me, they're gonna feel this. You don't have to agree with it, but you're gonna feel this. And by the way, I want you to think about it. Your last 10 arguments you have with your spouse, your mom, your dad, your boyfriend, girlfriend, what were they about? What were they about? 
I don't know you. We don't know each other. What were your last 10 arguments about? Some tells me it was about money. Some tells me it was frustrating. So are all rich people that bad? Because all we hear about is the bad thing rich people do. But I know a lot of poor people that are not doing good things. So if I had to choose between both of them, I tell you what, I've been poor, I've been middle class, I've been upper class, and I've been wealthy. And I've experienced all four of them. And I've seen good and bad in all of them. And what I've learned about money is money simply makes you more of what you are today. If you're giving today, you're going to give when you're making millions. Simple. If you're a bad person today, you're going to be a rich, bad person. That's how simple it is. So if you consider yourself a good person and you're watching this, you think you'll be better for America or better for society if you had an additional million dollars or $5 million or $10 million? You think you would do good? I think you would do good. So how about we talk about four steps on creating wealth for yourself? Let me tell you about step number one. When I was working at Bally's years ago, before LA Fitness used to be Bally's, and I started selling memberships. And when I was selling memberships, I learned something very quickly. My friends were graduating from USC, UCLA, and they were getting a $40,000 a year salary after going to school, after spending 100, 150 grand on college. And I'm working at Bally's, and I had made $5,000 in a month. And I said, wait a minute. My friends spent $150,000 to go to college. I don't have a degree, and I just made $5,000 in a month. Huh. Maybe the most important skill set to make money in America is sales. And by the way, Step number one to creating wealth is learning how to sell. Before you hang the video and change it and go to another video, hear me out and be able to disagree with me and say, Pat, I don't agree with you. Hear me out here. In every single family, there's political matters. Yes, you probably had some political matters. When somebody dies, who's going to get this, who's going to get that? There's always political matters. You know who typically wins? The one who knows how to sell. You know who typically dates and marries that beautiful girl that every guy wanted to be with? The guy that knows how to sell. That's simple. You know at your job, have you ever had anybody that got a promotion over you that wasn't qualified, but they got it over you? You know why? Because they know how to sell. And you don't know how to sell. And if you don't know how to sell, your salary's at 58. She's at 79. You think it's important you learn how to sell. Maybe it's important learning how to sell. Let me give you some stats here about sales. When you look at sales, the average salary 2016 median income for a sales manager in America was 117,960. That's $56 an hour. Did you know 46% of salespeople never intended to become a salesperson, but they're glad they did? See, that's exactly what happened to me. I had never sold. I was a, you know, I was a Hummer mechanic in the army. I was a bodybuilder, and then all of a sudden I got into it. I said, you gotta be kidding me, this is amazing. So step number, number one was getting into sales. What's step number two for creating wealth? Very simple. I want you to think about yourself, the wealthiest person you know. I'm not talking Buffett, Bezos, or Gates. I'm talking the wealthiest person you know. Who is that person, right? Can you think about that person? That person you're thinking about today, are they an employee or an entrepreneur? You probably said entrepreneur. If they're an entrepreneur, what makes you think you're gonna be wealthy being an employee, truly? What makes you think you're gonna become wealthy being an employee? It's not gonna happen. See, the biggest benefit America offers is if America was a company and they had a benefits program, the biggest benefit America offers is this system called capitalism that allows you and I to be entrepreneurs and build a business and make the kind of money you wanna make and no one's gonna say, that's not a good thing. But the key is entrepreneurship. This is why America's got 41 million people living here as immigrants, while number two is Russia at 11 million. Why do we lead in immigration? No one comes to America for Section 8. No one comes to America for Affordable Health Care Act. No one comes to America for Social Security. Everybody comes to America for freedom of being able to live the American dream. What is the American dream? American dream equals entrepreneurship. Are you taking advantage of that big benefit that they offer in America? They offer this in America. By the way, you ever hear the same when people say, you know, all rich people are rich because they inherited their money. Really? Really? Is that really the case? Or is that another excuse because somebody doesn't want to go out there and do the work to make their money? Because according to Fidelity, according to Fidelity, 86% of millionaires in America are self-made. 86% of Americans are self-made. What does that tell you? That means only 14% of people got their money from their parents. The 86% that made their money, they made their own money. You can make your own money as well. It is not that difficult today in America to become a millionaire. It is not. It used to be. It's no longer that difficult, right? 
So number two is entrepreneurship. Let's look at number three. So once I realized sales and entrepreneurship was the way to go, the other question I had to answer is what industry do I not get involved with? Uh, do I do real estate? Do I go into pharmaceutical sales? You know, do I go out there and do nutrition? What do I do? And I started noticing, maybe you have experienced this before. Do you have anybody in your life that maybe you graduated the same time as they did? Maybe it's a cousin or a friend. You graduated from high school same time, you guys got the same degree or you didn't get a degree. And both of you work the same amount of hours, 40 or 60 hours a week, and you consider yourself a hardworking person. You work 60 hours a week, the other person works 60, five years, 10 years later, she's making $300,000 a year, you're making $72,000 a year. And you ask the question, why is that? I realize the reason for that is, is positioning with the industry you're a part of. So the industry I chose to be a part of was the financial industry. This is why I chose the financial industry. I told myself, if I'm going to get involved in any industry, why not get involved in the industry where at least I can learn on exactly how money works? I remember reading a book that said the difference between rich people and poor people is rich people want to learn about how money works and they learn their secrets of money. Poor people would rather spend their money on parties and they don't learn how that money works. So I looked at it and I said, wait a minute, I have the habits of somebody that's poor and middle class. I need to learn how money works. Why not get involved in the industry? So that's how I chose and I started working with Morgan Stanley Dean Witter a day before 9-11 and then from there I left and I was part of Transamerica for seven and a half years. And then we started PHP Agency October of 09 with 66 agents, which is now roughly over 5,000 licensed agents that we have in 49 states. But why the financial industry? This is what's taking place right now in America today. Which market needs our help? There are four generations that all have a different issue they're facing financially. The first one is millennials. 82 million babies uh, uh, that are considered millennials. Now these millennials, this is the biggest uh, generation we've ever had in the history of America. 82 million, 20 to 34. Then we have the Gen X which are 35 to 49 years old. Then you have the boomers, 50 to 68. Then you have seniors above 65 years old, roughly 40 million of them that we have. The one thing that boomers and seniors have in common is they generally have something in place financially. The reason why they do is because back in the days, we used to believe in something called door to door. So somebody would come and knock on the door for a baby boomer or, or a uh, senior and eventually after they knocked on your door so many times and said, I'd like to show you about retirement and insurance, eventually the person would say, okay, come on in here. Then they'd sit down, they'd get an insurance policy in place and they'd get a retirement plan in place because back in the days we used to do door to door and back in the days we used to do uh, phone call, cold calling, right? Nowadays we have the do not call list and nowadays if you knock on somebody's door, that could be considered trespass. And so the generation that was affected by that was Gen X's and millennials because when's the last time if you're watching this you're a millennial or a gen x when's the last time somebody knocked on your door to come and show you about money and how it works it doesn't happen nowadays right when's the last time somebody cold called you and said hey i'd like to show you about your investments in insurance and annuities no one's doing that today right so these generations have different challenges but there's 200 million people in america that all need help with finances the other thing to be thinking about is the following I think both of us would agree that success of a business has a lot to do with timing. When you think about timing, this is one of the generations that you got to be looking at. Between 1946 and 1964, 76 million babies were born in America. We call these babies baby boomers. And the reason why they were born after 46 is because when war ended, husband came back, hasn't seen wife for the longest time. First thing they're thinking about doing is having dinner. Right after dinner, they're thinking about making babies. America was on fire. We made 76 million babies. Now, you may ask the question and say, what does making babies have to do with business? Everything. Look at the stats here. It's been said. If you can find out what boomers need next, what baby boomers need next, and if you can come out with a product that they need and you're at the beginning stages of it, you work hard, you can create wealth for yourself. Let's look at this timeline together here. Let's say today's 1946 and you and I know that in the next 18 years, 76 million babies are going to be born. If you and I knew that, what are some products we could come out with that newborn babies need? Think about it. If you said baby food and toys, you're right. You think about Gerber and you think about Mattel. These companies came around that time because they knew exactly what was needed next. Let's go into the 50s. Kids are now turning five to seven years old. What do we start attending at this age? School, right? But America didn't have enough schools to facilitate for 76 million kids, so what do we have to build? More schools. What industry thinks the best industry to be a part of in the 50s? 
if you said construction, you're right. By the way, 48% were built between 1950 to 1969. It's all about timing. If we go into the 60s, these kids are now turning 16 years old. What's the first thing on a 16-year-old mind? They want a car. Now, do they want a station wagon or a sports car? These guys want sports cars. What car do you think came out in the 60s? Whether you said Corvette or Mustang, you are right. These companies realize 16-year-olds want a nice, fast supercar, and these companies started growing. 70s and 80s, these kids started turning 30 years old. Wife looked at the husband and said, honey, I'm sick and tired of renting. Let's buy a house. Real estate took off. And last but not least is today. See, these baby boomers are no longer babies today. They're now 50 to 69 years old. What do you think they're thinking about? They're thinking about retirement. What do you think they need most? They need help with financial advice on what to do with their retirement. You see, Boston College recently said that there's roughly going to be $41 trillion. Let me say it again. $41 trillion that will be transferred from baby boomers to the next generation. You hear a lot of people use the B word. This is the T word. $41 trillion that's going to be transferred. What does that tell you? What that tells you is we need more agents in the industry. And as you look at this next slide here, this is what you see. In America, back in 1970, we had roughly 204 million people living in America. And we had 500,000 licensed agents in 1970. Today, our population is 316 million. These are stats from 2013 from LIMRA. And we have 149,000 licensed agents. Isn't that interesting how the population has increased, but the number of agents has decreased? Let me explain to you what this means. Supply and demand never lies. The demand for financial services needs is the highest it's ever been. Today, 41% of adults have no life insurance. That's 95 million adults. Yet, we only have 149,000 licensed agents that are selling insurance and retirement products. We believe this 149,000 licensed agents is gonna get to a million licensed agents by 2029. And if I were you, this is why so many people are getting involved in the industry today. Matter of fact, California just changed the law recently that instead of getting a 70% on your test to get your insurance license, today's 60%, and they just passed a law that now you can take the insurance license in Spanish because there is so much need in the Hispanic community that also needs to have life insurance policies in place instead of just focusing on having GoFundMes. I see so many people on Facebook, my friends, I'm from Iran, I'm half Armenian, half Assyrian. I see so many people saying we need a GoFundMe here because someone passed away, the breadwinner passed away, can you put $200, can you put $300? So many multicultural communities also have a need for life insurance. This is one way for you to serve your community as well. So let's recap the first three steps to creating wealth. Number one is sales. Number two is entrepreneurship. Number three is industry. Number four is choosing the right platform. I believe the best platform you can get involved with today in a financial industry, the insurance industry, is PHP Agency. This is why I believe we are by far the best platform to be a part of. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of great competitors out there. We have a lot of respect for them. Many of them are much bigger than us and have a lot more experience than us. But we are the fastest growing financial marketing organization in America today. I'll give you some things to be keeping in mind. So when you look at the marketplace today, what separates us from the industry? The average agent in the industry today is a 59-year-old white male. The average agent in PHP is a 33-year-old Hispanic female. The industry is white and male dominated. We are multicultural and we have 51% of our recruits that are women. The industry is boring, low energy office environment. We're very captivating, high energy. If you're around us, your energy goes to a whole different level because our culture is that different. Industry is using old marketing tactics. We're using innovative marketing tactics. The industry has quotas. We don't have quotas. Their vesting period takes two to 10 years for you to actually own your book of business with us. You only need to be with us for 12 months, be a field associate to be vested for whatever policies you ever write. The industry wants you to only build a company brand. With us, we like you to build a company brand and we teach you how to build your own brand on social media. The industry promotes through politics, we simply promote through performance. So that's the one thing that separates with us in the industry. The other thing that separates us, the fact that we are very much focused on technology. I don't think anybody in the marketplace is focused on technology within our industry as much as we are. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I brought Thomas Ellsworth, who is our president, Tom's background prior to uh, becoming a president of PHP. He used to be part of Jamdat many, many years ago. They made games for phones. They were the first company that made games for phones. You may remember Jamdat Bowling. I remember when Tom uh, talked about how he and his owners, they bought Tetris. If you play the game Tetris, they own Tetris. They eventually sold Jamdat 
to EA Sports for $680 million. Tom comes from the world of technology. He was the former founder of Premier Digital Publishing that he sold to HarperCollins, and he was a former CEO of GoTV, where they sold that company as well. All of those things makes Tom uh, one of the most experienced people in the marketplace uh, in the world of technology, and he happens to be our president, which we are very, very proud of. You can actually go out there and search him and go look him up on LinkedIn to find out a little bit more about his background. When it comes down to carriers and partners that we have, we're very proud with the partnerships we have. We work with companies such as Foresters, National Life Group, AIG, National Western, Allianz, Lincoln Financial Group, Mutual of Omaha, and many more. Let's talk about the kind of money you can make in this industry. Obviously, you gotta keep in mind that the financial industry is a very, very big industry, and there's a reason why all these big financial institutions and life insurance companies have their logos on these skyscrapers in New York, Chicago, downtown LA, because there's a lot of money to be made. The life insurance industry alone employs 5.7 million people in America. So it all depends on how big you want to build this. We have a lot of people that get started with us that part-time, they simply get their insurance license to do this part-time. They get trained, somebody goes out there and helps them out. And you can make anywhere between $1,000, $5,000, even some make $10,000, $20,000 a month part-time. Then there's people that want to become marketing directors, similar to real estate where you become a broker, you run your own office, you have your own agency. You can make as much money as you want to make with that, $10,000, $50,000. We've even had people make $100,000 in a month. And then you can become a chairman's council, which is somebody that has a vision to want to build a national agency. And that kind of income can go into the multi-seven figure your income. If you do it right, it's a lot more work. It's going to take a lot more effort. But if somebody thinks big enough to want to do that, that life can be there for you. Uh, to go out there and make that kind of money. Outside of the kind of money you can make with PHP, I want to talk to you about one of the main factors why we're getting so many leaders across the country, matter of fact, around the world that want PHP to come to their cities and their states, and they want to be leaders representing PHP in their communities. We offer a wealth equity program with step number one is vesting. If you're with us for 12 months, you're a field associate, you're vested. Number two is being able to sell your own agency. So say you're with us for five, 10 years, 10 years later your business is generating $2 million of income and you wanna sell that to somebody, somebody offers you six million, five million, you wanna sell it, you're more than welcome to sell it as long as you meet the guidelines but you can sell your agency. And last but not least is offering a equity program within the company which means you're getting shares of the company. And the reason why we did this, we currently have over 30 leaders that own a piece of the company. The reason why we did this is because we wanted our field leaders, yourself, to treat this company in a way that is your own company. I think a lot of times people work for other companies and they may get profit sharing or bonuses, but there's a big difference between that and owning a piece of the company. That's one of the things that we offer to you. So the person that told you about this video, you can actually ask them to send you the compensation video that gets into details. And in that compensation video, I actually explain everything with our compensation video to the T, I won't be doing it in this video. So having said that, the, the, the part that, I think the part that we're slightly different in a big way with everybody else is if you work with us and you hang out with us one time, it won't be the last time you do it. You're gonna wanna do it second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, because we like to have fun. I mean, we'll do weird things. When I say weird things, we'll run a contest and we'll say, we're going to Dubai. And we'll take you to Dubai and we'll put you at Atlantis or if you're one of the top performers, we'll put you at Burj Al Arab, the only seven star hotel in the world and it's $3,500 a night. And we'll rent a yacht and we'll go in the middle of the water and we'll be doing backflips off a yacht into a 98 degree water while someone's cooking for you and having a cocktail with your wife. We'll do things like this. We'll rent out a massive mansion in Tuscany, Italy, 17 bedrooms and take you and your spouse there and have a wonderful time while having a full-time chef cooking for us every day. And if you wanna learn how to make Italian food, you can also do that. We'll take you to the Caribbean and show all the islands. We'll go to Hawaii, we'll go to Cancun, we'll go to Costa Rica, we'll go to Aspen. We'll surprise our leaders and rent every single exotic car in Las Vegas and put a blindfold on our leaders and have them walk up to the Ferrari, the Lambo, the Porsche, the Bentley, and then we'll throttle it while they have their blindfolds on and they'll take it off and they'll say, oh my gosh, a Lambo standing, sitting right in front of me. There are certain things Things we do that we like to reward our leaders. We're very much of a sports-minded, competitive environment. So if you're a former athlete, you will definitely like working with us uh, as a company. We have contests that resemble a lot of the sports contests that you'll see out there. So for those of you that are athletes that you truly love to compete, and if you really think you're a competitor, I challenge you to want to come and compete with some of our leaders. Our guys know how to compete 
and uh, they do it in a way that's fun, yet at the same time they do it in a way that brings out the best of everybody. So now that I've told you about the four steps on how to create wealth for yourself with sales, entrepreneurship, industry platform, I want to kind of tell you what's happened to my life with this industry. You know, when I first got involved in this business, I, I, I didn't come from a lot of uh, money myself. You know, my dad worked at a 99 cent store in Inglewood, California. My mother went back to Iran because we didn't have a lot of money. My sister and her husband got married, and when they got married, right after the wedding, they went to Burger King, they ordered Whoppers, then they went to Holiday Inn, and then they went home, and that was their anniversary. We didn't have a lot of money. We don't come from a lot of money. And I had dreams. You know, I had dreams. There's certain things I wanted to experience. I, I, I had a chance to have all the exotics. I've had the Lamborghini Aventador. I've had the Ferrari 458. I've had the, the, the BMW i8, the 7 Series, the Range Rover, the Rolls Royce Dawn, the big 10,000 square foot house, the big parties to put together. All of those things I've experienced. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. I like baseball cards. I want a Babe Ruth card that's worth $150,000. I like Ted Williams rookie card, Mickey Mantle rookie card. These are things that I like. These are things that as a kid growing up, I would tell myself, I would love to one day have a Mickey card. I would love to one day have a Babe Ruth card. It mattered to me, it made me nothing to you. But I'm gonna tell you, even though I've had dinner at the most wildest places with Prince Edward, with political people, with people that are very powerful billionaires, with people in Hollywood, these are great experiences that I've had. The thing that money's been able to do for me and my family that probably means the most is the following. I remember, uh, my dad had one of his heart attacks. My dad's had a lot of heart attacks in his life. He's had 13 heart attacks, six angiograms, six angioplastics, three stents in his heart. But this one heart attack he had that really changed me was at UCLA Medical Center. I went there and I went and walked upstairs and I saw how he was being treated. It was just regular. My dad had lost 20 or 30 pounds that time. And I look at the man who's been the most powerful man in my life and he's weak. And it totally messed with my head. It bothered me in a major way. I got upset. My dad's trying to calm me. I said, Dad, it's okay. I love you. I went in the car downstairs. I was driving a Ford Focus at that time. I sat in the car, and I cried straight for 30 minutes. And let me tell you why I cried. I didn't cry because I was, you know, oh, my gosh, my life is this. I cried because I was so annoyed and disappointed with myself that I'm able to walk. I'm able to talk. I'm able to see, hear, taste, feel and I'm sitting here wasting my life while my dad is upstairs, could possibly die because he had this big heart attack and I'm not doing anything about it. I was so disappointed with myself. I was so furious with myself. Went, to home, went home, uh, woke up the next day and I was so determined after that night that I was gonna make this thing work for my dad and he was never gonna be in a bed like that and he was never gonna work at that 99 cent, cent store ever again. Fast forward a few months after that, I got promoted to a marketing director position, a broker position. My dad was right there. We were at Queen Mary Ballroom when this happened. At that time, my current wife was also there, but she was in a different relationship. I was in a different relationship, and you know, she was there witnessing me walking across the stage. We did not know that five and a half years later we were going to date, and then we were going to get married, and then we are going to have three kids together. And she's in tears. We were great friends. And my dad is there. My dad sees me walking across the stage. And, and uh, the gentleman, he asked me a question. He says, so why'd you do this business? I said, I wanted to be able to retire my dad so my dad never had to work at this 99 cent store ever again. And I went in the car and I told my dad in front of everybody that night when we drove home, it was emotional. It was weird, very strange. A couple months later, I took him to Hawaii. He's been to Hawaii now eight times. I've taken him all over the world. I've taken him to Laker game, surprised him while he sat right next to Kobe Bryant. And we've done so many random things. The last time my dad paid for dinner, movies, food, or anything for me was May of 2004 because that mattered to me. I, I wanted to do something about that. And then when I had kids, I wanted my kids to go to private schools. I wanted my kids to have the right mentors, the right teachers, the right tutors. I wanted, I wanted to find out what these guys liked the most and what did they gravitate the most. I wanted to invest into that. So they're able to experience certain things that maybe daddy was able to experience. And, and, and I wanted these things for myself. And some tells me, you do as well. Some tells me you also want to be able to do those things for the people that you love the most. Some tells me privately when you watch movies like Braveheart, when you watch movies like Gladiator, and you see these stories of redemption, while the hero at the end redeems himself, 
while the hero at the end faces themselves, stops making excuses and justifying all these reasons why they're not winning and they finally face their fears and they make it happen. And you get emotional, just like I do. I wanted to be there for my family. And I think you want to be there for your family as well. I don't know you, we've never met before. But if you're somebody that resonates with anything I told you in this video today, I cannot wait to meet you. I cannot wait to have you be part of our firm. And if you're right now looking at the saying, you know, a lot of this stuff makes sense to me, maybe get back with the person that sent this video to you. Maybe if you want a second opinion, share this video with your husband, with your wife, with your boyfriend, girlfriend, mom, dad, and say, what do you think about this? Do you believe any of this stuff? Does any of this stuff make sense? Get a second opinion from somebody. Maybe they're going to tell you, honey, don't do anything with these, this company. That's okay. We're okay with that. But share it with somebody else to get another opinion about it. Whether you do or not, this is one thing I do know for a fact. Whether we do business together or not, I certainly hope that you realize what is taking place today in America, it is very important for you to become financially free. If you do choose to get involved in the financial industry, my hopes are that you make a decision to run with us here at PHP. So one of these days I get a chance to meet you and we can go out there together, do something that's never, ever been done before. And we're able to witness all of your dreams becoming a reality for the people that matter the most to you. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Again, I cannot wait to meet you one of these days. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.